welcome back to Opal and Mint. I am Ashley, if you are new here, and today I'm gonna be swatching some handmade watercolor paints by Ocean Paper. I am so excited to get my hands on these. I immediately fell in love with these as soon as I saw them, and I went to the website and most of them were out of stock, so I grabbed one as quickly as I could, and I actually really like the colors that I got in this one. I really wanted the big bamboo box one with a bunch of colors, but I thought this was a good starting place to test these paints out and see if I like them. They are mostly out of stock now, and I, since I just found the brand, I don't know how often they restock, um, so if you do know, let me know in the comments because I am dying to get my hands on more. And honestly, one of these I think I'm going to run out of. I've only had this for less than a week <laughs> and it already has a dip in it. So I feel like that one color, I'm, I'm gonna want to get a single to replace it. But anyways, so today I'm going to swatch the ocean paper watercolors that I got. This is the um, Urchin and Sea Kelp collection. I will put it on the screen what it actually is. Um, but here are the gorgeous paints and yes, it is already messy because I have used it. But I'm going to swatch them and I'm going to show you some paintings I've done with it. Just some random sketches I've done with it too. Um, I did want to note, it smells like cinnamon to me. If you own ocean paper paints, tell me, does it smell like cinnamon? To you as well. Um, also the packaging of the paints is a 3D printed case and I when I saw that I was kind of unsure um, how I felt about that because we have a 3D printer and some of the stuff it makes is not the greatest but my husband was looking at this and he was like wow this is a really good job so it works beautifully um, it feels pretty sturdy it doesn't feel like it's gonna break in half or anything so um, and I believe it's made out of plastic that's biodegradable or recyclable or it's some kind of plastic that's good for the environment. But I'm excited about these colors. I love the muted tones of all the ocean paper paints and I want them all. But let's go ahead and get to swatching these paints. So we're going to look down at the desk and see them in action. I'm going to use this paper. Let me get this off. This is actually, is this one autofocus? I think it is. Um, this is actually one of the paintings I did with these paints, so there's a little preview for you, but let me take this off the block and we're going to swatch on this paper. This, oh, that's what I get for not paying attention and talking. I was about to tell you the name of the paper and it ripped. I really, really hate it when that happens. So I'm going to scan this one in and Photoshop that rip out. Got to pay attention, Ashley. Okay. Anyways, that's the painting I did with these colors. So let's get on to swatching. All right, so here are the ocean paper colors. Let's see, I haven't decided how I want to swatch these. Um, I think I just wanna have some fun. So they do have the names written on the sides of the pans. Um, it is a little bit kind of blurred because of the lines in the 3D printed pans, but this one appears to say yellow, and then something, T-R-O, Tor, something, Torin, Torin, Tor, I don't know this shade, Tyne, something Tyne. Anyways, I will see if I can find the shade names online and put them on the screen. Um, okay, so let's get to swatching. All right. Let's just play with some paint. So pretty. So using these, these are the first handmade watercolors that I've ever used. And using these compared to some of the big brands, um, professional grade, uh, I think these compete very, very well with that. Um, I feel like I need to turn down my brightness a little so you can see the colors. Um, I think some of them take a little bit more to re-wet so, so pretty. So some of them take a little bit more time to re-wet than um, my other paints that I use, but they are so beautiful. 
Okay, let's move on to the next color. This one is beige. That one I could read, and I love this color so much. Oh, it's so pretty. It's got this slight pinky, dusty, purple almost undertone. Like it just, it's, I love the dusty quality of these paints. That one didn't take too much to rewet. Beautiful. Oh, they're so, so pretty. Highly, highly impressed with these paints. Okay. The next one, is this camel? No, that one's camel. This one is loam, L-O-A-M. Loom, loam. Um, and again, I'm gonna say this about every color. Absolutely gorgeous. So what I gathered from these, looking at them online, is they are more opaque watercolors. The formula of these is a little bit more opaque than most, or than just general watercolors. And the thing that I love about that with these particular colors is they're such muted soft colors and if they aren't opaque, you don't really see them. Um, but they do also shear out very nicely. So it's not like using a gouache. I'm messing this up so bad. It's not like using a gouache, um, but they are a little bit more opaque for a watercolor and I'm just loving playing with these. They're so much fun. I feel like the sun keeps, that's better. It's a little bit, there we go. Okay, um, this one. The next one is Lemonade, Lemonite. Um, again, they're really hard to read, something like that. Cause they, oh, I just touched the lens with the brush. The camera is extremely close to the paper today. See, this one's a little bit um, more sheer at the moment because this one took a little bit more to re-wet and reactivate. I love this color of yellow though because it's not too in your face, but it is definitely still yellow. I can smell the cinnamon as I am working with these. <laughs> I want to know what that actually is. I mean, I don't know if it is cinnamon, but it smells like cinnamon to me. If you know, please inform me. So, so pretty. All right, the next one is Potter's Pink. So this is Ocean Paper's version of Potter's Pink. Let's see what we think here. So, the only other potter's pink I have is Daniel Smith's, and it's not quite as dark as this. Um, I prefer this version of potter's pink. Um, the Daniel Smith one, I don't like the consistency of it quite as much as even the rest of Daniel Smith paints. Um, this one, however, is so pretty. Oh, it's got like this burgundy, but muted, and it's so pretty. So pretty. All right, the next one I think is camel, yeah. This one is camel. It looks kind of pinkish in the pan. Let's see here. It is more of a pinkish um, beige. So pretty. They lift well, they blend beautifully. Good color payoff. Uh, the next one is red ochre. So Look at that. Hmm. 
it's gorgeous. I would like to know, since this is my first set of handmade watercolors, I wanna know what you feel the biggest difference is in your handmade watercolors versus some of the more commercially made ones. And also, if you've tried more handmade watercolors, what's your favorite brand? What do I need to try? I looked at several, and honestly, this one, even though it's so hard to get, this one just kept reaching out to me. I just, I loved the tones and the shades and um, the opacity of them. I don't know, there's just something about this brand. I just had to have it, and now I want more. Hit the microphone. Okay, this is the shade I'm afraid I'm going to run out on. This is C Clay, I believe. It is the most beautiful mint shade ever. <clears throat> Don't worry, we're gonna actually paint something too. And I'm gonna show you, look at this. It's a muted mint and actually, so our opal and mint logo, I feel like it's really close to the shade. <laughs> This might be a little bit more muted than our logo, but it is close. And it is so beautiful. Mm. The paper, I started to say what paper I'm using but I forgot um, this is the fluid 100 uh, fluid 100 8 by 8 cold press this is hundred percent cotton and um, I really like this paper okay last row these are so pretty what color are you this one is slate blue green this is one of the deeper colors in the palette uh, the deepest one is this green. It's gorgeous, but I say it's deep and then that was really light. Just takes a little bit to reactivate. But even as a light wash, this color is so pretty. I like using these two together. Let's see if we can get some more color here. All right, the next one, this is a very warm tone green, and this is called Green Umber. This one is filled um, up very high. I wish that the mint one was like really, really tall because that's the one I'm gonna use the most. Um, although I do really like this shade and I like to mix it with other ones to tone them down. I mean, these are all toned down, but this is kind of a, a brown. I know it's green, but it's, I guess, the closest to a darker brown in this palette. But it's also nice to mix this green and this like burgundy-ish red um, to make a pretty brown as well. I'll show you mixing some of these colors together because I definitely like I, I've said in previous videos, I like mixing colors. I don't normally use them just straight out of the pan. I like to mix and have different shades and tones. And um, But the point of getting this palette actually was because I wanted some already mixed colors that are gonna be consistent because I'm illustrating a children's book. And I want the colors I don't have to be mixing them and getting them exactly right over and over because it's gonna be a long process and um, I just wanna make sure that the colors are consistent. So this is most likely gonna be the color palette of the book that I'm illustrating. Okay, this one is Fern. It's a beautiful deep green. I 
I just want all the ocean paper paints now. Can I say I have expensive taste? I wanted the like the biggest palette. It's like 500 or something. Oh, this one was 140 and it is a lot. Um, but you're getting handmade quality paints. And honestly, I'm spending 14 to $20 a tube on my Daniel Smith per color. So it's not really more expensive than getting professional, other professional quality paints. All right, the last one is another one I've actually put quite a dip in and probably gonna use this one a lot. And this one is green gray. And it goes very well with this minty color. But I love, love this shade right here. I like this color palette, all of these colors, how they work together so beautifully. I normally swatch with a round brush, but I'm really liking the filbert brush. It's kind of fun. Mm. They're so pretty. Okay, while those dry, because I want you to see them dry, I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I've painted so far using these paints, and then we're gonna like actually paint something together. So I'm gonna set this aside. Let me get all the things that I've painted. Okay. I'm gonna turn the autofocus back on since these are gonna be at different heights. Okay, start with these loose ones. Obviously, this one, which I showed you and I ripped it. <laughs> ah, look how well the colors work together. Um, here's a little bit deeper of a one. Of one, I used the like, reddish orange in this one and that deeper green. Um, just some. I think this was the very first thing I painted with these. I just, I just wanted to put paint to paper and I painted some really quick flowers. Um, I painted this adorable little fox. I just wanted to see how they looked with characters and animals and stuff. So um, I started painting this background and then my son fell in a chair and um, I had to stop painting in the middle of it. And so it the background dried and I couldn't finish blending it out. But here are just some of the colors together. A single flower. <laughs> I painted this little kitty and my son bumped into me as I was doing around the eyes and he looks sad now. <laughs> oh goodness. Painting with a five-year-old is entertaining. Okay, and then probably my favorite, wow, this is too tall to turn. That's how close the camera is. Uh, this is not my favorite, but this is um, just a door that I painted. Uh, I think it looks meh, okay, but it's not my favorite. But this one I love. You can see these colors. I didn't mix colors here. I just used the color straight because I wanted to get a sense of how it would look, um, you know, illustrating a children's book. So the yellow, so, so gorgeous. Um, you can see in the swatch, I swatched it quite a bit lighter, but I wanted to see how opaque it would get. And then this shade right here as well. Look at that. I just touched the swatches and then obviously the boots are this one and then the skin tone I use just that and then the background is the mint color just nice wash of that soft color so there is that and I really love the colors together and I'm excited to get started on the book but that's what I've painted with it so far I just can't seem to put these colors down and um, yeah, I am, I'm just so excited. I've, I've been wanting to use this instead of reaching for my Daniel Smith, but I mean, it just depends on the painting. Um, but I'm definitely gonna be using these quite a lot. 
And by the way, the lid, I took the paper, this was sitting here. Um, the lid you can use as a mixing palette. It does have some lines in it from the 3D printing, but it's not like really deep lines and you can still mix color. So I did do some color mixing of these colors. So let's actually do that next. We're gonna mix some colors and then we'll paint something. Um, should I just do them down here? I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, yes, so let's mix some color. Let me clean a little bit of this up. There went the brush in the floor. All right, so I wanna show you what I was talking about mixing brown. Let's see here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade here. And then, sorry, this, hold on. I need to turn off the autofocus again. And then I'm gonna take this green. We're gonna mix those together. Tiny bit more red. Look at that. Okay, let me swatch this. Look at that color. So this is like a, almost like a Van Dyke brown looking shade, just mixing those two together. Um, it's got a little bit of a reddish undertone. Um, we could add a little bit more green to counteract that red, but just playing with those two colors together, making a gorgeous brown. And it's granulating, so you can see the red specks in here, because that one is quite a granulating color. I mean, this does too, but that red really does. So um, it's just fascinating to mix the colors, and then we'll see what it looks like dry, because I think it's gonna be fabulous. Oh, that sounded funny. Okay, let's see what else I can mix here. Um, I just, when I'm mixing and when I'm painting, I just, I don't, I mean, I think about it, but I don't really think about it. I just do it. Um, so like stopping and having to just think of a color to mix. Um, I'm anyways, my brain. Okay. Let's start with this yellow. This is one that, um, I think takes a little bit more to rewet. Um, I am slightly, I'm not going to say disappointed, but sad that they all seem to have bubbles in them. And so I know it's not a ton of paint lost. Sorry, it's not even in frame. They all seem to have bubbles in them, like some of them quite big. And so I wish that those had been like worked in with a toothpick to make sure there weren't bubbles and filled up completely. But that's just me being picky. Cause I feel like I'm going to, I'm gonna run through these paints and be very sad and want more. Okay. So we have yellow. What should I mix with the yellow? Ouch. I'm gonna mix this already um, warm green. Mm, mix a little bit of the teal. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Okay, so we're gonna go, this teal is taking a little bit to activate, but we're gonna get some of this teal and then some of this yellow. Beautiful. Again, that is this teal color and this yellow color mixed together to make this kind of a sap green. Look how this is separating and it's so red, but then it almost looks like gray with red in it and I don't know, I think it's pretty. Okay, let's see, let's try and mix two more. I need to like mark a line where the actual colors are and the mixes are. It's not a straight line, but that's okay. Um, but um, but um, but um, but um, but um, let's take this like orangey red. What can we do with this color? I feel like so. This is one of the more vibrant ones in the palette, and I want to dull it down some more. So, um, I'm actually I'm really curious what it's gonna look like if I mix in 
this color. Ooh, that's cool. Oh, I like that. So I'm definitely gonna do a video on color mixing at some point, color theory, color mixing, but in the meantime, just play with color. Like, just mix color and see what happens. You might find something really cool. Okay. Let's take, so the existing color that's there, I'm just gonna leave that, and I'm gonna take the fern color here. We're gonna mix that in. Let's see, what else do I wanna add to that? Get some more fern. And then I'm gonna add a touch of this yellow. I'm making another sap green. <laughs> of course I am. I'm gonna see how close it is. Look at the variations here. Um, let's put in some camel. Get some more water in this. There we go. All right, we got some camel. And touch of the orange. Yellow, and then this burgundy color. I love mixing color. It's just so much fun. Okay. So as I paint something, I'm gonna mix more colors probably. Um, again, like being on the spot, like, okay, mix a color, pick a color. It's kind of weird. But anyways, here are the colors in the palette and then some mixes. And I think it's time to paint something. Um, so I think I'm gonna paint some florals just because that's like a go to, don't have to think too much, just paint um, and have fun. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so we have a fresh sheet of paper and again, show you what this actually is. Fluid 100 cold press, eight by eight. And I'm just gonna start painting. I think I want a different brush. Yeah, we're gonna go with this. This is a Master's Touch round number eight brush. And honestly, these are some of my favorite brushes. I don't even know what kind of flower I'm painting right now. So just gonna start painting. Okay, the camera overheated, so I had to take a small little break. Um, okay, it's still, like I didn't wait that long, so it might overheat again, but I wanted to try and get this finished. So, let's see here. Yeah, oh, now the battery is low. much water on the brush that time. Put the yellow back on there. Trying to see around the camera <laughs> to get these painted.
minutes and then I'm gonna mix a little bit of camel this one beautiful made this gorgeous dusty pink Oh, I love that. a rose. I think I want to do a little bit of this orange, but I want to tone it down a little bit. There we go. I'm just going to do a little rose here. Beautiful. Okay. Um, the battery's about to die. I'm going to let this go get the bat a new battery and then we'll do all the leaves. All right. Let's do some leaves. I'm going to take that fern color and I'm just going to mix it with that orange that's already there. Get kind of a brownish green. I feel like I need one more flower there, so let's take and do some leaves right here first. Taking a little bit of fern and I'm just going to drop that in there. Okay. I need a flower here. What do I want to put? Just do another whatever this is. <laughs> Start putting brush strokes on the paper. Doesn't have to make sense at all. Sometimes you make up your own kind of flower. And you just put a little bit of yellow in the center and you call it a flower. If you call it a flower, then it's a flower. <laughs> kind of like Bob Ross's Happy Little Trees. This is our own little flowers here. Alright, so let's get some more green. Go into this here. And um, I like to rotate my paper when I'm working so I can go whatever direction I'm comfortable with. Let's add a little variation in this. 
color. I'm adding in a little bit of the yellow. Feel like putting in just a little, I don't know what this is, but it's just greenery. We need some up here. Whoa, I just splashed that everywhere. Mm. very silent there. <laughs> I was concentrating on that. <laughs> that one took some more focus evidently. Don't be afraid to layer. I just put my arm on this over here. I'm putting in a little bit more yellow. I feel like I need some like skinnier leaves. Of some, let's do a bigger one there. That one kind of went out a little far. I feel like I need to put a butt up there or something now. Actually, let's do that over here too. Let's get a little bit of this. Put a little flower budding here. Maybe one here. Again, you call it a flower, it's a flower. All right, so let's take, I'm kind of mixing all the greens together now. And I'm just gonna do some little brush-shaped leaves. Just dotting those around. Just add some, oops, some filler. Sometimes you just need these tiny little filler leaves to pull it together. I've only been doing floral arrangements for a couple of months, so I am not claiming to be, oh, it's overheating again, an expert. I'm not claiming to be an expert on any of this, actually. Um, I just love to paint. And if you love to paint, even if you don't think you're very good at it, just keep painting. I mean, every artist who is good at it has put in a lot. Of hours. Some may learn at a faster pace than others, but the common denominator of the artist is a lot of hours. <laughs> a lot. Um, I may not have been, been, I have not been painting in the grand scheme of things all that long, but I've definitely put in a lot of hours of painting. And I just love, again, see these are just little buds I'm putting. I just love to paint. Okay, that was off the screen for probably part of that, but I'm gonna stop there. This is just a muted floral arrangement. Again, I'm just playing with some paint, having fun. And 
I hope this encourages you to do the same. So basically my initial review here of ocean paper paints, I love them. If they make me excited to paint and I paint more because them because of them, um, all the technical stuff doesn't really matter what their binders are and all of that. They make me excited to paint and therefore I love them. So I am excited to hopefully get some more of these in the future. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you want to see any other paint swatches or reviews, um, I'm sure I'll be buying more um, as I keep painting. But that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you want to see those future videos, hit that subscribe button down below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. I don't have that info for Forney, Texas, but Forney is part of Kaufman County, which I do have information for. What on Kaufman earth? Kaufman County's average annual precipitation is 41 inches. That was satisfying. Today, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna try and talk. Where's the paper? The ocean paper. Hey guys, and welcome back to Opal and Mint. The screen is distracting me.